Well, the concept of quality can be viewed as a psychological aspect. But most of the time, you will see me talking about psychology. Because um, I see advertisement and the way we approach a product, um, I see that in a very psychological way. We consume not because we need, we consume because of our psychological needs. That's the way I see that thing. Most of the time, many people see it in a different way, but this is my approach. So that's why I will be talking about psychology a lot today. So, when I talk about concept of quality, I say that this is a psychological thing. And I see it from a psychological way. Um, it is a psychological conditioning of mind in the minds of the consumers. Well, to explain this, I'd like to make a comparison in the concept of quality. Well, when we talk about quality, for example, in romantic encounters, we have certain qualities, certain understandings. Let's say that. Uh, in our modern times, when we say modern, it means today, nowadays, our times. Let's consider a couple. Many couples think that, think that a holiday, when going to abroad in a romantic city like Paris, is a qualified, extraordinary experience. And if somebody comes up that, you know, I bought some tickets for Paris, I bought some tickets to spend the whole day in Rome, then that person will be rewarded by his partner, by her partner. So going abroad and spending some romantic time is considered as a quality. Okay? And I say that this is a learned pattern. It's a learned behavior. Why? It's coming with the culture. If you reverse the time, and if you read an anthropology book or a history book, you will see that in the historical times. For example, in ancient times, in ancient Egypt, you will see that in people's social lives. People would never think about to have some romantic times visiting Babylon or Assyria to have some rewarding times for a couple. But instead, if the husband reveals plans of a tool or mummifying the lady, then that would be the boom for the family. Because at those times, the idea was eternal life and an eternal tool not a holiday in foreign land. So the idea of quality was very different focus. And this example is taken from a different book, like Sapiens. These conditionings, of course, can be used to describe quality. And uh, not very focusing on different patterns of most of the times, we are conditioned to answer the phone. If we want to stay alone, if we want not to be disturbed, we retreat to our room, but the phone rings, and we feel an urge to answer the phone, because we are conditioned to answer the phone. These are small conditions in our lives. This is the academic terminology of conditioning and uh, this is the scheme how the conditioning of the dog is done. Uh, this is basic Pavlov's experiment. Uh, you 
you have a foot and in front of the foot the dog expresses saliva so this is the nature of action and then you shout the bell, you ring the bell, nothing happens and then you show the foot and ring the bell so foot and bell goes together and the dog feels its hunger we have saliva and after ring and foot together for some time you have only the ring and then you take out the foot you have the bell and still the condition continues the foot act, the um, dog acts as if it is seeing the foot okay. so it's just like there is no traffic and yet we see the red lines, we stop as if there is some trouble. So now I'd like to move on for the case of London for H and M. Well, the quality has some symbols, just like if I have some tickets for Paris, then I will have very romantic times with my partner. It's a condition symbol of quality. Right? It's very generalized, but it's a symbol of quality. And now, in H&M, in an advertisement, they are changing these symbols in favor of London, and they are making a recondition in the advertisement. Now we have our symbols. Symbol of roses, it symbolizes the quality of the feelings towards a beloved person. And another symbol, diamonds, towards a beloved person, it symbolizes the quality of feelings. When these are exposed, a rewarding behavior is expected. This is the structure of condition. Okay? But something is wrong. The lady says, no, I don't want this. This symbol is not working. I don't want flowers. I want lemon. And then a stronger stimulant comes out. Diamonds. And the result is the sign. And then another one comes. This time, correct stimulus comes. And then it loves. And then it works. So the symbol is changed. Now I want to show you how this is organized in a very surrealistic setting.
Diamonds, doesn't work. Flowers, doesn't work. London, yes. Nothing changed. This was the um, main advertisement of 2011 when London enters into Turkey. So that was the main advertisement. Okay, um, now I want to move on another step of behaviorism. And that's taking an example. Well, um, another way of <coughs> learning what to do is by taking an example, making an example. Um, not in universities, but in high schools and uh, elementary schools, usually, the um, instructors, the teachers are ordered, they must, if you're very informal, right? Sometimes in universities too. Um, is there a dress code here in this university? No? No? For instructors? Yes, no? Good luck. So, sometimes uh, in the universities we have, uh, in high schools, teachers must follow their dress codes. They must be very formal. And in primary schools, they must be very formal. And everything is much more formal. And there's a reason for that. Because they are the role models to be followed. In a university, the story is different. We just spill information. We're not a role model. We just throw out information, that's it. Um, in primary schools and high schools, the instructor, the teacher is a role model because people look and imitate. And the same principle is applied in advertisements if there is a star personality. And here we have a star personality. We have Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner played feel like a star commercial for Turkish Airlines. And the idea is actually what's reverse. I'll tell what's reverse. Well, usually, for example, Pepsi used Michael Jackson for the same idea. It was you drink Pepsi, you become Michael Jackson. You use this item, you become Marilyn Monroe. You use that item, you become you name the actor because he's using that watch. Right? That's the idea. But this time, this advertisement reversed the idea. They used Kevin Costner, and then we find out that it's not the ordinary man trying to become Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner already become the ordinary man. And we will find out at the end of the how, how this is becoming, we will find out at the end of the retirement. Alright? Okay. In behavior as model, the original model creating a desired action uh, that's lauding the other people with desire to become like that person. Okay, let's put it on. Right. Here we have Kevin Costner during the complete advertisement. He is the star, he is beloved, he is ideal, he is going around, he is going to Turkish Airlines, and he knows that everybody admires him. So he is, you know, in the airplane, he drops his napkin, right? And the steers comes and picks up the napkin. 
and he immediately grabs the napkin and he gives the signature, right? That's that's normal for an actor, right? And then he sees a family taking pictures, just like you guys taking a picture, right? Imagine a bad camera. He immediately steps in the picture. He makes this. Alright? And now he's in the picture. So he's making a favor to the family. Alright? And it's all around like that. In Turkish Airlines, flirting with the series and making funny things with the families. It's camera, right? And then. We find out that right at the gates, when he gets down the line, Kevin is going out at the you know out of airport. He looks at the mirror, and in the mirror we find out that the reflection is not Kevin. That's not the other guy. And then the reflection changes. In the reality world, we see the ordinary guy. An ordinary guy sees Kevin. And then we find out that, oh Jesus Christ, Turkish Airlines is so luxurious that an ordinary guy like you and me feel himself or herself like Kevin. So all the way this guy is feeling himself like him, acting like him, he feels so star-like, he's acting like him. And then we find out that when he signs napkins and do all these crazy stuff, why do these other people are getting very much, what is he doing kind of faces? So that's Behavior is in reverse. I'd like to show Um, but 
the air, the feeling is lost. Very funny. There is another mechanism in psychology which is called transference. You have a feeling and you transfer that feeling. You see it a lot in football matches. Um, your team leader gives you the spirit of winning by loading you with that desire. Uh, we call it transference. So this idea of feeling is transferred to you by the advertisement. So when you have that item, you feel like that. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit. Next presentation. Okay. Um, this is rituals of advertisements. And in the rituals of advertisements, there is a very logical science, which is the transference. And in a transference mechanism, I'd like to give you an example of swatch. Swatch made a series of watches um, in the series of James Bond. But um, in this series, you will have both the villains and the good guys of James Bond. And they took the very identical patterns and models of the evil guys and of course good guys of James Bond and they transferred this into watches which you can see um, you have this guy, let me read his name Thunderball you have uh, God, I can't read uh, anyway, you have all these villains um, their characteristics and their models over there and the idea is, when you get this watch, you also have their powers, you also have their charisma, and it's the same thing. I have seen lots of advertisements of Leonardo DiCaprio in the airport. He's pausing with a watch, and the wa he's holding the watch like that in his wrist, like this, and he's pausing like that. So, his charisma is very long, and of course, that's, the watch is very expensive. The idea is, when you have the watch, you have the charm and the charisma of the man on you. When you have a Louis Vuitton uh, bag, the idea is, we have the charm and the charisma of the brand. And the same idea works here. It's the same idea of the talisman. When you have the charm of the talisman, you are invisible. And the same idea carries here. And I especially this slide because it's like it looks like this one. So the psychological transference mechanism is used in the very voodoo sense, which is borrowed from other tribes. So by this, I'm going to end the presentation. And if you may, I will give you questions. This is all of a sudden, right? <laughs> um, okay. I just throw in lots of relationship with advertisement and psychology. Uh, yes, I don't make advertisements, but uh, I see lots of relationship between what's presented in advertisements and uh, the emotions that are arose in between us and uh, 
many times I feel in very much conditions. You know, I, I take to airplane to come here, and we are tied up in our chairs. You cannot move any place, and all of a sudden, this little screen in front of you starts up, and I, I push the button to turn it off. You can't turn it off. It's off, and the switch button is not working. And it just spills all that advertising about Superman versus Batman, and I just can't turn it off. It just gives you the advertising, and you cannot say it yourself. That's real condition. Then I put my little napkin in front of it. Alright, the, the images, the visual stuff, but the sound is still coming up. You can't. You can't save your stuff. It's just a continuum. Well, you can't save it, but um, you can make it in a more beneficial way by directing it, by managing it. So that's what I'm trying to do.